when I first became Muslim, one of the things that really surprised me was when I realised that Allah is the same as God, and God is Allah, and that actually Christian um, Christian uh, people call God Allah, not God. Allah is the correct name to use when we're referring to, to God. And the reason being is because in the Arabic language it's totally unique. It's you can't say uh, goddess like you can say goddess in English um, but you can't make the word Allah into a feminine tense uh, you can't make it into a plural tense so it's a totally unique word now um, when the belief in the one God the belief in Allah um, is manifested in a word called Tawheed Tawheed and Tawheed basically is an Arabic word which means unification or asserting oneness. So Tawheed basically means believing in the oneness of Allah. Now one of the questions that comes up a lot, um, especially for, uh, for new Muslims, is where is Allah? Now there's a very simple answer to this and it's very clear in the Quran and, and in the hadiths of the Prophet peace be upon him, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in fact above his creation. He is above his, his throne. Um, and this is related in Surah 70 verse 3 to 4, Surah 35 verse 10. And also there is a hadith or many hadiths but one particular one that says that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says as part of this hadith, he who is above the heavens, fissama, which means the heavens, will be merciful to you. So these are some things, because sometimes people misunderstand and people say that Allah is everywhere. No, Allah is not everywhere. Allah is all-knowing. Allah is aware of everything. Everything we do, everything we say, everything we think. He is so close to us, but physically he is um, above, um, above his, uh, his, his throne in heaven. Now... One, uh, one surah in the Qur'an, which is usually one of the first ones we, that we learn, is Surah Al-Ikhlas. Qulhu Allahu Ahad. Say, He is Allah, the One. Allah, Hussamad. Allah, the Eternal, the Absolute. Lem yalid, wa lem yuled. He begets not, nor is He begotten. So, in other words, He doesn't have a mother and father, and He doesn't have offspring like sons and daughters. And there is nothing like Allah. So we can't imagine what Allah looks like. We shouldn't imagine what Allah looks like. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a, a description of his attributes. And there are 99 names that describe these. One of them, for example, is Al-Rahman, uh, the merciful. Now, Tawheed, like we were talking about before, is split into three different areas. The first area is Tawheed or Rububiyya. So it's the, 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 the unity of the worship of the Lord, of Allah's Lordship. The second area is Tawheed al Asma wal Sifat, which means the unity of Allah's names. And attributes that basically means that we we are not allowed to give um, a false attribute to Allah or add names to Allah's names so for example um, we couldn't describe Allah like in, in the Bible Allah is described as um, creating the heavens and the earth in six days and resting on the seventh day resting is a human attribute Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't feel any fatigue or need a rest. Allah is not a human. Allah created humans. He's, he doesn't have these needs like we have. And the third area is Tawheed al-Ibadah. Al-Ibadah means the unity of worship. So Tawheed, the unity, al-Ibadah, worship. Now this is where we put our belief in the one God into action. And that means that we avoid all shirk. Shirk is a word that means when we associate something with Allah. So, for example, when um, uh, somebody worships um, another god other than Allah, even if they believe in Allah, but then they worship um, another god. So, for example, that the Christians will say that in Isa or Jesus, peace be upon him, is the son of God. This is a shirk in Islam. This is something that is, uh, that is not allowed. And so we avoid all this. 
In the Quran, in verse uh, Surah 51, verse 56, Allah says that He created us all with the purpose of worshipping Him. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in future sessions. So that's the end of this short mini session. I hope that it's been help helpful. The next session, moving on, is I'm going to talk a little bit about shirk, the different types of shirk, 